Now, uh, usually we talk a lot about mechanical properties while designing structural systems, but there are also some non-mechanical properties which are very, very important. Essentially, they are all associated with the five senses which we have, you know, uh, most, I mean, even taste we can include, but mostly not the taste part. But uh, when you talk about construction, touch because you want whatever construction uh, systems or you know uh, facilities you, you want the texture is also very very important you know you don't want everything to be rough but sometimes you want rough surface so touch feel is very important sight smell here uh, all these are very very important and we do consider these things while uh, designing uh, material systems so i'm going to cover these four aspects only here today acoustics smell and aesthetics and thermal comfort okay acoustics it's associated with the ears right so you have to if somebody is speaking in a room where you're sitting you need to be able to hear the sound very clearly you don't want echo so these are some of the things which you might be seeing in many places where you visit you will see a lot of this perforated uh, or you know uh, these wall elements or these are the roof elements or if you are in an auditorium you will see some cloth or uh, you know cloth material uh, on the wall these are all sound absorbing materials okay if you replace let's say you are an, in an auditorium and you replace these cloth material with like steel plates or some metal plates you will not be able to hear the uh, you know program very clearly because there will be a lot of echo. So, these are very important aspects of uh, design uh, and materials have to be chosen in appropriately. So, what they do and what is the working principle here you can see on the left side here there are four arrows which indicates how the sound waves penetrate into the, uh, the sound absorbing material uh, and then it tries to absorb the sound so that you do not really hear the echo. You can see on the left side these are this is the acoustic uh, absorbent or the noise absorbing material and th this is the sound waves and it goes in and it does not come out ok that is the whole idea. Now uh, yeah you can see here uh, the incident sound and some of the sound is absorbed by the green material which is on the rigid wall and some sound is reflected some not all. If you have a fully 100 percent sound waves are absorbed then you cannot hear anything ok it is <laughs> that is another extreme uh, part of it. So, you have to be able to design it appropriately so that uh, you can hear the uh, sound at the same time you do not feel echo ok. So, here you can see on the right side I just got these images nice images from the internet um, and very nicely explain the concepts. So, you can see here the person let us say you are in a classroom or something teacher is speaking and then uh, you know if you in this case one first order reflection you have and then the person is getting disturbed there ok. You might see a lot of echo, but in the second case you see these three yellow sound absorbing material or board uh, on the wall in that case there is actually no echoing you know see only. Uh, only the this person this uh, red arrow it is hitting this and then it is getting absorbed there and then this line also it comes and then it gets absorbed here. So, the people do not uh, feel any or they do not hear any echo. So, that is the advantage and these are becoming more and more important in today's uh, buildings ok. I would also say something here and uh, you know there are you know few decades ago when we talk about structural design or building design anything the skeleton of the building it used to be the uh, you know uh, most uh, cost intensive or in other words most expensive part of the building ok. The construction as such like you know uh, the brickwork or the columns and beams uh, slabs etc. that used to be uh, you know accounting for 90 percent of the cost, but as time passed we started adding uh, heating cooling systems or air conditioning systems, uh, paint, interior design uh, and many other features when you, uh, electric fittings. 
so many things uh, we started introducing into our uh, buildings or structures and now the cost for that skeleton has reduced and the, if you take the overall contribution of the uh, you know for a construction the cost of the other things like this interior fittings uh, finishing work etc that has significantly increased okay i just wanted to mention this because these are all all non structural elements which play a significant role uh, both in case of functionality of the building and in case of the uh, cost of the building this is another uh, noise barriers which you will see um, i mean now in india also we see a lot of this coming up in uh, some places but um, this is widely used abroad uh, when you want to uh, curb the or control the noise from the vehicles. So, you can see on the picture on the right side there are some residential areas here and that those people do not want to get disturbed by the uh, you know the sound or noise from the vehicle. So, they have these noise barriers these are again very uh, you know surface is uneven in nature. So, they are like here you can see lot of perforation. So, the noise gets trapped inside and it gets absorbed by the system. So, the people on outside they do not really uh, get uh, disturbed with the high heavy noise. Noise pollution is very very less and it is important for both human beings and animals in the, in the nearby areas. This is a, a probably an earlier version of noise barrier earth berm. Um, this is from uh, California. So, you can see like a, a soil just uh, a barrier made out of soil and of course, you have uh, small plants uh, in grass etcetera growing that will absorb lot of noise from the uh, vehicles. Okay. Now, other thing which we have to worry about is the uh, smell that is our uh, nose the sense uh, you know the smell of wood paint etc sometimes creates a lot of problem i mean i remember many cases where uh, people will have to keep the window open for few months before the uh, the foul smell of the paint goes away so, or if you use some chemicals in construction you know that might induce some uh, you know long term uh, impact on, on it will have some influence adverse effect on the comfort level in a, in case people will have to keep the window open otherwise they will not be able to work. So, you have to choose the I mean these are all things which can go in as specifications technical specifications when you uh, try to purchase paint you should ask whether will it have any um, in a bad smell and uh, yes, things like that. Okay. I just wanted to bring all these aspects because sometimes we overly uh, we get overwhelmed with the mechanical properties alone, but there are other me non mechanical properties also which play a significant role in material selection. Uh, other thing is aesthetics and nothing more to talk about this except the fact that we must remember functionality when we uh, talk about aesthetics. Okay. So, functionality is very very important aesthetics should not affect the functionality of the uh, uh, structure or whatever facility we are building. But this aesthetic is definitely dependent on person to person something which I like you may not like I might like red color you might not like the red color. Uh, so, it is all person to person uh, architect to architect this will change. Uh, but there are different factors uh, you know uh, which we uh, we can consider while uh, designing the structure okay now other parameter is thermal conductivity okay again becoming more and more important in today because you are talking about climate change lot of heat uh, you know especially in uh, countries like india and if you are talking about other part they were uh, cold countries where you want to contain the heat inside the building because the outside is very very cold and in summer uh, countries where climate is very hot there you do not want the heat to come from outside to inside the building. So, both ways you want to uh, prevent the exchange of heat through the wall that is the idea here. So, here is an example photograph which shows again from the internet various elements wallpaper, plaster, brickwork, insulating wall, rendering all these can have an influence on these are different 
uh, you know components of a wall and they all can play a role in making the uh, house or the building uh, thermally comfortable. Yeah, now, look at here the thermal comfort. So, thermal conductivity is the rate at which the heat is transferred by conduction through a unit cross section area of the material when a temperature gradient x is perpendicular to the area. So, here you can see on the left side there is a sketch which shows two materials with thermal conductivity K1 and K2 and the uh, temperature or T1 is higher than T2, T1 is higher than T2. Okay, Let us say assume like that. So, if the conductivity is high then you will have faster movement of the uh, heat from one side to the other. So, you want to keep it uh, low, you want to keep it low. Okay. So, here are some example materials at the bottom you can see I am just going to take this example of brick. Uh, where you have uh, one with a lot of uh, you know open space inside it is by design and this is a typical clay brick second picture and the third picture is a laterite brick which also has lot of air voids inside the it is a natural uh, naturally available uh, material uh, and lot of air voids inside and people use it uh, in uh, the cut in shape of the brick and then use for building construction and then this is the third one which is a concrete brick and the fourth one, fifth one is uh, aerated block. So, third one, two, three, fourth one is the concrete brick uh, and then fifth one is the aerated concrete block which also has lot of air voids inside. It is made by uh, mixing the concrete with hydrogen, uh, uh, sorry mixing the concrete with alumina powder and uh, during the reaction the hydrogen bubbles are formed and then they have lot of these well distributed air bubbles inside the brick and that is very lightweight brick also and uh, that also helps in uh, preventing the exchange of heat from one side to the other both heat and noise. So, these are uh, this uh, if you have air voids inside your brick it is good bo for both noise control from one room to the other and also from uh, temperature uh, or thermal exchange from one side of the wall to the uh, other side. You can look at this example here thermal conductivity for a dense concrete block is very high okay, and a light concrete block is very low. That means, in the case of a light concrete block it will take more time for the heat to get exchanged. Okay. Whereas, uh, also another example is plaster with the dense is 0.57 or 0.6 and plaster lightweight is 0.2 or 0.18 right. So, you can see that as you have lightweight means there may be some air in it that is why it is lighter. So, the more air you introduce into the system your thermal conductivity is going to be low and when the thermal conductivity is low that means that heat exchange is going to take more time. Okay. So, it is good for uh, use it is good to use materials which has low thermal conductivity. Okay. Now, also when you talk about low thermal conductivity another thing is advantage of all this is uh, typically uh, these will also like you know uh, bricks with uh, porous uh, structure or air voids inside will also have high resistance against noise. They will also function like a noise absorbent. Okay. So, for example, in the buildings where you have a wall if you are talking here people in the other room need not uh, listen to what you speak right. So, in such cases you will see actually in today's mayor most of the construction where they use very high quality concrete you will see that this is a bigger becoming a problem that uh, somebody is speaking in one room the other people in the other room can actually hear. So, you should think uh, about what type of material to be used for interior walls in buildings. We should use for interior walls we should use uh, brickwork or whatever the material we use should have good resistance against noise. They should function like a noise barrier. Okay. Now, we talked about various things and this is the last slide in this and design concepts. Uh, one thing which we look at is strength or mainly mechanical properties. Okay. 
then we also look at deformation or ductility or deflection etc that is mainly coming from the serviceability criteria like for example i am going to use a, a case of a bridge okay let's say this is a bridge here okay and you have a vehicle okay vehicle going now serviceability means this bridge should not deflect like this when the vehicle is traveling it will deflect to some extent agreed but it should not be like so uh, def so much of deflection that you start feeling worried whether you are going to fall down or not so that is there is a limit for deflection so those are again looked at through the mechanical properties but it has mainly the serviceability characteristics or uh, criteria then there is a third one which is durability which is gaining more and more popularity nowadays because we want our structures to last very long in such case it is more of a chemical properties and also mechanical i mean i'm not uh, saying no for mechanical mechanical plus chemical properties are important for example one area where you know i focus mainly is corrosion or deterioration of concrete structures where corrosion is essentially an electrochemical uh, you know mechanism right so we look at the interaction between the steel and concrete in a particular environment whether steel will corrode or not so there is essentially an electrochemical feature which we are looking at so i can change the chemistry of the steel and chemistry of the concrete so that i can have durable structure so it's essentially service life uh, based design or durability based design we look at if you want a structure to last for 100 years you will see what type of concrete will give you 100 years what type of steel will give you 100 years like the steel concrete composite combination will give you 100 years of life or if you want the structure to be built only for 20 years of life you can decide it accordingly you don't need to then use a material which will really last for 100 years so these are all the concepts so you have when you designing something you should know what is the service life required how long you want the structure to last and then you select your materials accordingly then sustainability is again another thing where uh, sorry here durability is very important but also you have to look at availability of the material and how what about the carbon footprint there are many aspects which carbon footprint so so many factors we have to consider when we talk about sustainability people should like to use that thing forever you know it should be the technology should be sustainable and at the same time that material should be available for as long as possible so these are i'm going to call this as 4s for the design concepts so you can think uh, about these design concepts no don't worry only about the mechanical properties you also have to think about other properties while uh, designing structural systems now to uh, summarize we talked about uh, brittle and ductile behavior work and energy fatigue failure then we talked about non mechanical properties such as acoustics uh, features smell uh, very briefly though but these are important things to cover aesthetics thermal conductivity and also finally looked at 4s design concepts 4s those are uh, strength uh, serviceability uh, then uh, service life and uh, sustainability